Many have asked the question, is there life outside of our planet? Various space agencies have done a great job at discovering new planets, some of which have a lot of things in common with Earth, meaning that we know other planets exist out there that could potentially hold complex life. It's these discoveries that have caused us to explore certain regions more. Some of the most fascinating discoveries are those of asteroids. These large rocky bodies are interesting for a number of reasons. One, because they have the ability to wipe out all life on Earth, and also because they tell us a lot about our solar system. One asteroid that caught many people's attention goes by the name of 1999 RQ36, and the reason people are so interested in this rocky body is because they think there's a pyramid on it. This structure has since become known as the Black Pyramid, and various people have shared their opinions on what they think the strange object is. Asteroid 1999 RQ36 was discovered back in September of 1999. It's estimated to measure in at just under 500 meters, and is even listed as being a potentially hazardous asteroid, meaning that at some point in the future it's going to crash into us or fly past at an extremely close distance. NASA said the following about the mission on their website. The mission will help scientists investigate how planets formed and how life began, as well as improve our understanding of asteroids that could impact Earth. NASA detects, tracks and characterizes asteroids and comets passing close to Earth using both ground and space-based telescopes. The Near Earth Object Observations Program at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California commonly called Space Guard, discovers these objects, characterizes some of them, and plots their orbits to determine if any could be potentially hazardous to our planet. JPL manages the Near Earth Object Office for NASA's science mission in Washington. End quote. So what do NASA make of this strange looking pyramid that can be seen on the edge of this asteroid? As of right now, they haven't commented on the images. Something interesting to note though is that the images that show the pyramid were not taken by NASA, but rather were sent back from the Indian Space Research Organization. This has caused some to say that NASA edited their images in order to not show the pyramid, and that the reason they sent a mission to this asteroid was in order to investigate the pyramid. One UFO researcher said the following, We know that NASA has been editing their photographs for years, but I think this is one of the most interesting discoveries that's ever been made on an asteroid. It seems to me like they edited this image so you could no longer see the pyramid, and sent a mission there in order to go and investigate it. They made up the excuse that they wanted to get samples from the terrain of the asteroid, when all along they wanted to investigate this strange structure. It makes you wonder if they've been doing this with other solar bodies. End quote. Others went on to note that it's strange how NASA's and the Indian Space Research Organization's photographs don't match up, saying that either one of them is lying. Others have put forward more out their theories saying that this is proof that advanced life exists within the universe, but others have gone down a different route. Although they noted that the object does look a little strange, it doesn't mean that it's proof of pyramids or advanced life. They have said the object in question could be a shadow or even a case of pareidolia. One UFO researcher even said they tried to reach out to the Indian Space Organization, asking them what their thoughts were on the strange object. However, they said they never got a reply back. As of right now, not much information can be found about the strange object, and with NASA refusing to comment, it's only caused more other theories to be put forward. NASA have said there's various places of interest, and that we don't have to travel far to find possible life, as scientists and researchers have said that other complex life forms could actually be within our very own solar system. One place that's of particular interest is that of Jupiter's moon Europa. Due to this moon being of high interest, space agencies have said they want to send rovers to the planet and this is for the sole purpose of finding out if there's life in its vast ocean. Known as the Europa Lander mission, 
NASA scientists theorize that the most likely candidate for life to be found in our solar system is expected to be within the icy surface of Europa. Due to its expectation of the moon holding vast amounts of water beneath the frozen surface, Data surrounding Europa believes the moon holds a vast salty ocean of water, similar to our oceans on Earth. This giant ocean is said to span the moon's entire globe. Additionally, due to the frozen surface, scientists expect the conditions of the water to be favorable, as the ice surface acts as a natural atmospheric barrier against radiation, similar to our electromagnetic field giving life desirable conditions to flourish without its deep oceans. NASA plans on sending a rover to the moon in an attempt to penetrate the surface, and collect samples more than 4 inches deep to better understand the complex chemistry of materials from the ocean below. Efforts are already being made by NASA engineers to design a rover similar to the Martian rovers, that will carry miniature laboratories within the lander to analyse samples, but with the addition of an onboard chemical analysis lab, they would be able to hold microscopic cameras for the analysation of bacterial and microbial life. Although the project is still in its conceptual stages, it holds high promise in the search of extraterrestrial life, and seems to be of growing priority in the coming years. Interestingly, this isn't just fantasy either. A British scientist has come forward and said it's almost a certainty that Jupiter's moon Europa is home to alien life, but they noted that these creatures could look similar to the octopus that we have on Earth. Bringing animals back to life will always be a controversial topic. Those in favour will say it gives us a chance to study them, and understand what life would have been like thousands of years ago while others say we should just let them rest, and that there's a reason they were wiped out in the first place. Russian scientists went with the first option, and a few years back it was announced that these worms had not only returned back to life, but started to feed and multiply rapidly. The news then got shared recently on various websites, and due to everything that's happened it got people worried. The event was described by scientists as being truly revolutionary, and saying that they thought this would never happen. The team are now working on trying to understand how these worms were able to do what they did. One of the first websites to feature the news that the Russian scientists had thought roundworms was back in 2018, and although people have voiced their concerns, the scientists have said it's one of the greatest discoveries they've made. These roundworms have been under scientific supervision the whole time, with the team saying that the discovery is nothing short of a revolution in the field of cryobiosis. Cryobiosis happens when water around the creature becomes frozen, and in turn causes that animal to become frozen. Once temperatures return to normal, the creature will continue to live on. What's interesting about this discovery is that scientists weren't even looking for roundworms at the time they were found. Things like bacteria and single-celled organisms have been known to survive much longer in similar conditions, but the team have said what's so special about this is that these roundworms are multicellular organisms, and no one thought these worms could have been resurrected after such a long time. One of the team members, Sachlovich, said the following, We hadn't obtained multicellular animals that had survived cryobiosis on a geological timescale before. It was just a happy coincidence that we got two live nematodes in two soil samples at once, but even their existing record for survival in suspended animation was only around 30 to 40 years. End quote. Even when the soil samples were sent off, the worms weren't initially seen. The scientists at the lab placed them on a petri dish and started to observe them for the next 72 hours. One of the researchers said the following. We spotted the worms only when they started moving. That was around 10 to 14 days after on freezing. They probably came to life even earlier. End quote. Non-believers soon started to put forward other theories like these were modern day worms, and not ancient worms as described. But these rumours were soon put to rest as these samples were taken from specific regions, and these were near rivers that were able to be dated back 42,000 years. 
or so they were collected from the ground using a drill, with the scientists noting that the drill had been sterilised before use. The team said that the first sample that was brought up ended up being over 32,000 years old, with the second being even older, saying that after tests were conducted this one was 42,000 years old. Both of these roundworms were identified as female. Statlevich said the following about the creatures. A single-celled organism can survive due to its adaptive properties. For example, the ability to form various stages of dormancy, spores or cysts. But a multicellular organism has a more complex structure. Although nematodes are also known to have a dormant stage, during prolonged hibernation damage to DNA and cell membranes can occur and can accumulate in the cells. Toxins can be produced that should either destroy the organism or be repaired during the suspended animation or after defrosting. Somehow these worms manage to survive. It's a most curious enigma. End quote. When she was asked about the safety of these and whether we should be bringing ancient creatures back to life, she said the following. As a result of the ongoing thawing of the permafrost, organisms preserved in it find their way back into the modern ecosystem every year. It's a natural process. We simply follow nature and do nothing that doesn't happen in the natural environment. End quote. Some people voice their concern about this though, with one person saying the following. With everything that's recently happened, do we really need to be doing stuff like this? I understand it's impressive, but is this really the best time? End quote. While another person said this, We understand how cool and powerful Mother Nature is. We lived through it recently. We really don't need to be bringing things back to life that lived on this planet tens of thousands of years ago. End quote. Well, this person simply said, do you want Jurassic Park? Because this is how you get Jurassic Park. I have a bad feeling about this. End quote. It seems that this isn't the only thing that Russian scientists are working on. A few years back it was announced by a team of researchers in Russia along with South Korea that they've been working on bringing back prehistoric creatures. The scientists are currently carrying out research in a lab that costs $5.9 million dollars. The scientists hope to study animals that were once extinct from the living cells, saying that they want to be able to move on to restore the creatures. Some of the animals they're studying include the cave lion, woolly mammoth, woolly rhino and species of horses that went extinct. Scientists from Harvard and Russia have already delved into mixing genes to bring back species that are extinct, and they've said they want to put woolly mammoth genes into an Asian elephant, and they plan to do this by 2021. Some have suggested this could be the start of something huge, with people putting forward the idea that we will eventually have many extinct species roaming our planet once again. So what do you make of these interesting stories? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thank you.